So in this video, we want to look at the LED strips that we have taken out in the last video. We're going to do some bench testing, replace the SMDs before we put them back in the TV in the following video. If you choose to just replace the LED strips, you can just put them back in there with a the double back tape or double sided tape and um, just replace them and put it all back together and you should be good. But in my case, the TV is old enough that I really don't want to spend even, even 40 or 50 bucks on it probably to repair it. So I'm just going to try for the first time to just see how a uh, surface mount LED repair works. See how good it'll last and hold up on mine. Since I can buy a pack of about 100 LEDs for less than $12. So you can fix a lot of TVs for that even even if it don't last as long as the brand new strip. So it is a HD TV, but it's a, a 1080p. It's an older HD TV. So I definitely spend 10 or 12 bucks on parts, especially when I got a lot left over. So I just thought in this video, we would supplement the um, 47 inch Vizio TV repair video in case someone was interested in maybe replacing their own surface mount LEDs. So if it all goes well, what I bought is the three volt uh, 2835. So that's 2.8 millimeter by 3.5 millimeter. So this is what we have as a replacement. So we just need to go through and, and just um, see which ones are bad. Uh, one of the things I noticed on many TV repairs that I've done, and I'm not a TV repair person by any means, but I have fixed a few, and uh, it's too much of mine that goes bad that I that I don't try to fix uh, one way or another. So, but you do notice, even though LEDs are very easy to check, for example, bringing this one over with a meter and diode check, if we have the anode and the cathode, cathode where they're common and anode where they're positive lead on diode check. It's easy to test with the diode check mode on our DMM or our digital multimeter. But one thing you may know about strips if you dealt with them before, they don't make it easy because they're all in series. There's a higher voltage current regulator. So it makes it a little more difficult to test. But since we know they're all in series, one thing I've always seen in the past is that some of these will be so black and burned out, they'll be deformed because the LED has gotten so hot. And sometimes that does ruin the strip. So sometimes you got no choice but to buy at least replacement strips and, and maybe just go ahead and do the job correctly and just replace all LED strips, which is recommended on a TV repair. But in this case, I, didn't, I can't remember if I showed it on video before, but none of these darkened or blackened, none of them look burned. They all look to be in fantastic shape. So obviously we just got something going on with the LED chip itself. And they didn't completely open up because I think all of these um, will give us some output. We will see a little bit of light, just enough to have a little bit of resistance in them. So they make LED strip testers. If you do it enough to justify buying one, it's not a bad price. Now I'll put a picture up here, maybe a link in the description in a bit of help. They also make a little heating pad to, to help change these. If it's something you do often, if you had a TV repair shop maybe, but if you like me and just work on your own or a few every now and then, I'm just going to bring over my power supply and this is something you have to be very careful doing. Just keep in mind that each LED is going to be three volts and look at how many you have in series. And let's just make sure I'm going to current limit my supply at around 50 milliamps. I'm going to be very safe with that. You could do 100 milliamp, no trouble. But So what I'll do, for example, this strip here I want to test. As we see, we have five LEDs on one. On R1, we have five LEDs. And on L1, we have four LEDs. So all together, we're just plugged in if you want to check it all at one time so now i have my power supply on and set for 27 volts and about 50 milliamps and hopefully you can see that these have a very clear indication for plus and minus and the reason we can't simply test these with our meter is number one with these diffusers on here you actually can't get to the smd led chip itself and of course they're in series and i don't have enough voltage to check in series unless we get the power supply. So, so at 27 volts and 50 milliamps, I know you can't see all these, but they all light up the same brightness. So this complete strip is good. I can set it aside. I have another one here that's completely put together and it's nine as well. But only one of these is not lighting up and the others are very dim. So we got a bad module Hopefully it's not off camera, it's this one right here. So this module on L2, which that's the way these TVs are, is L2 has one, two, three, four, five 
on L2 and R2 has four. So it's just the opposite of L1 and R1. So these alternate in the TV as we've seen in that video, taking, uh, taking the 47 inch Vizio apart. So I've already found one bad LED. I'm gonna keep going. On this one here, I've already taken this lens off because I know that this one is bad. And right here we have four. So we don't wanna go above 12 volts. I'm just gonna cut my supply back to 12 volts. And to make it easier to see on camera, instead of plugging these in, I'm just gonna do them here in single strips. And the difference here is we got to make sure we have the right voltage for the uh, number of diodes in series. And I also have to jump on the ends of these. They will be in series with the other board. In this case, the L2 board. I have to make sure I jump this around so I can put my 12 volts on these four. So with this end jumped out with five of these, we have roughly 15 volts on the power supply. Testing this one. And this is another good one, as you can see, all, all light up at 50 milliamps. This one does not require a jumper because it's the end strip, so. This one also is five, so we're still set correctly. It is an issue with this one. Just gonna pop off this little plastic diffuser, just glued on by three points here. The actual LED does not look bad. Look at there, it worked. It's just got a bad connection internally. So, I have a few marked off here, including this one. This one needs to go back to 12 volts. If you can see, the resistance of this one is pretty high, but it's letting um, just enough current go through to light them all up. Hopefully you can see that on camera. They're all lighting up in the center except for this one. So probably the same thing. Yep, there we go. So all of them that fail has failed the same way. So I'm just gonna peel off this little mylar, this little insulating pad to see if we have any luck uh, replacing the little surface mount LED here. The first thing I'm gonna try here is a little bit of hot air. I just wanna do it simply with the tools that I have. I just wanna heat it up directly up under the pad. Put some solder paste on here. I think that got it. Just that thermal pad on the back was stuck. Cleaning up pretty good. I'm gonna just put a tad bit of this solder and flux paste on here. Like so, hopefully that focused. Nope, there we go.
So that was extremely easy. I'm just going to super glue these little lenses back on. One thing worth mentioning, these are three volt 2835 LEDs, but that's dimension. So it's, it's 2.8 millimeter by 3.5 millimeter. But I ordered these first, not realizing that the small pad was the anode or the positive. So I ordered some more where the small pad or the smaller part on the back for your connection, that little smaller pad is actually the um, cathode or the negative side. So it does matter which ones you get. In, in this case, this Vizio E470IA0, it, it actually takes the ones that has the smaller pad being negative and not positive. So of course, that's what I mean by this. You have a much larger pad and you got the little small pad And of course, on diode check. Hopefully you can see that. They look very similar. You just have to know which one you're buying. They're both um, either 2835 or 3528. And this is actually the first ones I bought. And you see how the small pad is positive or the anode on these. So, so that's your difference. So it does matter which ones you get. So just be aware of that. I have the hot air set at about 300 C. Cause I'm lose, I'm using some um, lower temperature solder paste, just a tad bit. I know it's hard to see on camera, but as soon as you see it go from a dull gray to a shiny silver, you know that it's melted. So back now testing this last LED I put on. I do have to jump the end, put a jumper on the end on this strip, and there we go. That's 12 volts at 50 milliamps, and so it dropped down to 11 volts, because these are way more than 50 milliamp LEDs, so there we go. Okay, testing this one with a fourth one out of the five replaced. So this was gonna take 15 volts at 50 milliamps to test. And there we go. It's gonna look like that. So I'm waiting on the glue to dry on two more that's clamped, but the rest of these are ready to try out in the TV. So I'm gonna head back to that video where I'm showing the strips being put back. So that's going to be all for this video, just showing the surface mount LED uh, actually being replaced on the strips. I'll have a link in the description down below for the LEDs that I chose to use if you're interested. I'll also have some recommended um, tools if you're interested, places like Shop Jimmy um, sells, 
and maybe even eBay or Amazon may have them where you can actually lay this on the little heater bed and do the surface mount LED a little easier if it's something you might do often. And as well as the little tester, if you don't have a current limited power supply to do it properly, Again, no more often than I do it, I just use my current limited power supply and do the correct voltage per three volts per LED. So don't forget to check out the Vizio 47 inch being put back together. And if you found this video to be helpful today, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.